Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to our YouTube channel once again. And it is my hope and prayer that this video is actually going to find you guys in good health. Personally, I am fine as you can see. Kisumu is also fantastic. And maybe you could also let me know where you're watching the video from, the county or the country, in case you are out of the republic. Ladies and gentlemen, in August this year, Kenya experienced a nationwide blackout. And that blackout affected Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. And the focus of the country shifted from that blackout to the blackout at Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. Because Kenyans could not understand how a mere blackout could affect an international airport. Kenyans expected JKA to have an automatic generator that goes on immediately, power goes off. That was not the case. And I remember the cabinet secretary for transport, Kipchumba Morkumen, going to Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, assessing the situation, and then announced to the country that that incident where there was a blackout will never occur. And Kipchumba Murkomen went ahead and fired several individuals from their duty. Kenyans believed that was the end of blackout at JKIA. Again, just uh, last week, another blackout affected the country. Kipchumba Murkomen could not give any justification why he never fired any, any individual. According to Chumba Murkomen, there was nobody to be fired. And the truth of the matter is that Kenyans expected Chumba Murkomen to take responsibility for that blackout. But today, the entire country was actually shocked when none other than the deputy president, Rigadi Gashagwa, came to the defense of Chumba Murkomen and blamed the former regime of Uru Muge Kenyatta for the failure of a generator at Jomo Kenyatta International Airport over one year since Uru Kenyatta left office. Kwa hivyo, mimi nengetaka ni akikishie njini ya kwamba historia ikiandikwa. Serikali ambaye itamaliza uhalifu katika hii county ya Baringo kabisa ni ya serikali ya daktari William Samoe Ruto. Juu ya hayo waziri wetu Kipchumba ametangaza mambo mengi sana ambayo yanaendelea. Na huyu Kipchumba anajaribu. Na kuna wengine niliona wanamkemea. Atiaji uzuru ati kwa sababu generator imekataa kufanya kazi pale JKI. Huyu Kipchumba ndiye alinua hiyo generator. Ilinuliwa na ile serikali ingine na ilikuwa fake. Sasa ikijaribu kuhakishwa inazimika. Sasa kipchumba wewe tafuta generator yako uweke wachana na ile ya ile watu. Si hii kijana anajaribu. Tuache kuingilia viongozi buri. Kwa sababu mambo tulikuta ni mengi ilikuwa imeharibika na ndio tunajaribu kurekebisha. Sasa wanataka kutubebesha hiyo mzigo na hiyo generator ni yao walinunua pesa mingi wakanunua kitu fake. Ikiwekwa moto ikiwekwa load kidogo inaanza kutoa moshi. Sasa lazima kipchumba afanye marekebisho pale, alete generator mpya na mambo yote pale abadilishe. Na ajenge airport mpya ambaye ni ya kisasa ambaye itatupatia heshima katika dunia nzima. Mimi sitaki nipitie hapo niseme tu watu wanaongea mambo mengi, oh mambo ya uchumi nini? Wacha mimi nimwambie watu ya Baringo. Huyu William Ruto rais wetu kijana wenu hapa nyumbani. Mimi ndio naketi naye pale. Na kama kuna kiongozi katika jamhuri yako na BD ni huyu rais wetu. Now if you paid very close attention to that statement by the deputy president Rigathi Gashagwa, do you think we have a country? Do you think Rigathi Gashagwa is normal? Do you think Rigathi Gashagwa was the best Kenya Kwanza could offer us as a country? Of course I understand that Rigathi Gashagwa was not the choice for Kenya Kwanza. Majority of Kenya Panza leaders had actually settled on none other than Professor Kithuri Kendiki as the deputy president. As fate would have it, because of the other factors, Rigathi Gashagwa was nominated as the deputy president. I truly believe that something is seriously wrong with Rigathi Gashagwa, if not the entire Kenya Panza. 
So in this video, I want to reveal to you guys the secrets why Rigedi Gashagwa is defending Kipchumba Murkomen over the blackout at GKIA. Before you do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, let us dive in. But before we do that, allow me to also take this opportunity to thank the following people you are seeing their names on the screen there for the coffee which they sent to me earlier. You can also do the same using the numbers you are seeing on your screen. A cup of coffee only goes for 200 bob, but you can do more. Ladies and gentlemen, after the first blackout, I was talking to a friend of mine. And the gentleman told me something that is now clear to me. He told me that, Lee, forget about the Ministry for uh, Finance. The most lucrative ministry in any republic is the Ministry of Energy. And he told me that in this country, we have two cartels controlling the energy sector. There is the Ikuyu cartels and Rift Valley or the Kalenjin Mafia. He told me the Kalenjin Mafia were there during Moi when Kibaki took over and when Uru took over the Kikuyu cartels took charge of energy sector. When William Ruto took over, the first thing he did was to regain control of the energy sector. And he challenged me if I knew the reason behind that. The gentleman then went ahead and explained to me something that shocked me. That for Kikuyu cartels, what bothers them the most was how much they would lose in case of a blackout. That if a blackout were to happen the way it happened, how much in terms of profit are they losing? So they, they would always work hard to ensure that they don't lose because of a power blackout. So every time, even if there's a blackout, very fast, fixed, within a short time, the country goes to normal. But he told me for the, for the Canadian mafia, it's normally about how much they can make during a blackout. So for the Kikuyu cartels, it's how much they're losing. So they can't allow a blackout because during blackout, they lose. But for the Canadian mafia, any blackout is an opportunity to make money. Rigeti Gashagwa's statement is actually confirming that. For me, Kipchumba Murkomen should actually take responsibility. If you are in a working country, because you don't have a country, Kipchumba Murkomen should have resigned, especially after he fired the other individuals. Of course, Kipchumba Murkomen is not the minister for energy. But we are not talking of JKA, where a mere generator failed. Secondly, is on the issue of Kenya power, uh, the issue of uh, generators, standby generators on K, uh, JKIA. Uh, we saw yesterday, sadly, a few months ago in August, the CS of Transport, Murkom, and went to Kenya power, uh, to JKIA, fired individuals, uh, told the country that generators have been fixed, but yesterday it was a disaster. Uh, how can you lose electricity? and generator at a critical national asset uh, like Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. I think the minister must apologize to the country for lying to Kenyans that the generators were working. Yet he knew very well they were not working. It is an embarrassment. The other day, JKI roofs were leaking. He formed a committee to look into leaking roofs. Now, I hope he is not intending to form another committee to look into why generators are not working. Because the generator to work is very simple. Every Kenya knows how generators work. Unakanyaka, unafruta maratatu, na generator inawaka, and you have electricity. So do we need an explanation to that? I think that this is the incompetence of the CS of roads and transport that is not only incompetent, but he lied to Kenyans that generators are working, and yet they are not working. Now, that's Cherarge, and I agree with him fully. And that's the gentleman Rigeti Gashagwa was actually responding to 
in um, Baringo. Remember previously, Kipchumba Murkomen was in Baringo and he was heckled. Then this is Kipchumba Murkomen's own response over this particular matter because I want to reveal to you guys why Rigeti Gashagwa is coming to the defense of Kipchumba Murkomen. We have done so much, Come next you know, in, you know, in, in this ministry beyond a generator. Beyond the generator. Beyond the generator. Oh. And yet people... Uh, Eric, and I just want to say this, people want to reduce all this effort that we've done in, in financing, in all this kind of thing, to the minister only failed in a generator. Granted, this has been a challenge we dealt with. And I tell you, come next January, when you call me, we will have advertised a construction of a new airport terminal at JKI. And in another three years, yeah, those who are saying now uh, crucify him, crucify him, mm. in the next three years will be saying Murkomen Osana Osana. So why would a deputy president defend mediocrity in the name of failure of a generator at an international airport? Number one, it is now clear that the blackout, the nationwide blackout, was not about the normal blackout. It was a scheme <laughs> to fire unwanted staffs from office and also for tender schemes. Yesterday, there was a cabinet meeting and uh, <laughs> they resolved that uh, they were going to, into, to, uh, to float some tender to increase, I don't know, some transmission line to a tune of 60 billion that is serious tender that is why we were experiencing blackout and that's why someone like um, the deputy president instead of being sympathetic to kenyans instead of uh, of apologizing to those who are affected is blaming uhuru kenyatta the other day they even blamed uhuru kenyatta for a roofing, I mean, for, for a leaking roof at JKIA. And you wonder whether during Uru Kenyatta's rule there was no rain. It rained. But someone wanted to create opportunities for tender. So they created some leakage. And as we speak, if Chumba comment is confirming that they are floating another tender for you next year. Of course, they've also succeeded in firing whoever they wanted. So it's about how much they can make from a blackout. That's a sad situation. Number two, you see, Kenya Kwanzaa has become very unpopular. Very unpopular. So, because they were in Rift Valley, they had to bring in the name of Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. The, the usual blame game. I don't know whether Kenyans from those regions are also together. I'm not so sure. But the truth is, it's high time for these guys to be stopped from blaming Uru Kenyatta. You can't blame Uru Kenyatta for that long. You can't. You know, we had a, a generator failure in August. It failed again. Then you still blame Uru Kenyatta. While, when, while Kenyans know that when Uru Kenyatta was the president for 10 good years, we never experienced power blackout at JKI. So it was all about tenders. And of course, number three, it's also confirming to Kenyans that Kenya Kwanzaa were not ready to rule this country. The alleged plan, because they had the plan, was not really the plan. Otherwise, if they had that plan, small things like fixing a generator cannot make a deputy president to stand on a podium to defend a cabinet secretary. I don't think so. And lastly, Regeti Gashagwa is also scheming for 2032. That is the problem. Instead of working for Kenya now, he's scheming for 2020 and 32. He believes that Kipchumba Murkomen is the one William Ruto is grooming. And according to them, Kipchumba Murkomen will then be, according to them, 2032 is, is uh, another Kikuyu who is in that matter, for that matter. 
the deputy president then deputized by another candidate so i don't know what you think what can you tell our deputy president in less than two words i'm reading your comments bye bye